Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to look at some Leaving Cert Higher Level Statistics exam questions. These will be um, good questions to use in conjunction with the statistics review video, which I'm going to link in the description below. If you're looking to extend statistics to inferential statistics, I've done a separate video on that and that video is also linked below. Example 5.1 Distributions the shapes of the histograms of four different data sets are shown below. Complete the table below indicating whether the statement is correct or incorrect with respect to each data set. The data is skewed to the left. So left means a tail to the left. So A has its, its tail to the right, so that is skewed to the right. B is symmetrical. C is skewed to the left and D is symmetrical. The data is skewed to the right. So A is skewed to the right. B is symmetrical, C is skewed to the left, and D is symmetrical. Then it starts asking us about mean, median, and mode. So we're going to start working with um, where does the mean, median, and mode appear in a data set. So I'm going to work with the symmetrical one first. So this D here has one point, and this is the mean. It is also the median and it's also the mode. So the mode is the one that appears the most. So I'm going to identify the mode. So there's my mode. Here we have a mode here. And here we actually have two modes. So this is called bimodal because it's got two modes. All the other ones are called unimodal. So when we have the mode, um, we can also then identify the median. So the median is going to be in the middle. So there's my median. And for my median, so the median will be in around where we got four, so somewhere here. Uh, halfway through our data, it's going to be a little bit further left. So maybe in around here will be our median. And for this one, our median is in around there because it's half of the data. The last one we have is then our mean. So our mean appears slightly to the right there. So when we add them and divide, we'll get a number that's in around there. Here, our mean is actually the same as our median. So where is the mean equal to the median? So that happens in the two symmetrical cases, B and D. Where is the mean greater than the median? So we want the green line to the right of the blue line, and that only happens in one, and that is in A. And where has a single mode? Well, all three have a single mode. The only one that doesn't have a single mode is D. A good way to remember it, if you can identify mode, because that's the tallest, they always go in the same order. Next comes median. And finally comes mean. And if you actually look, that is in alphabetical order. So you're kind of working backwards from alphabetical order and then you'll never go wrong because they're always in that order. If you can identify mode, then you have median, so you have the A, the D and then the O. So assume that the four histograms are drawn on the same scale. State which of them has the largest standard deviation and just try your answer. So the one that has the largest standard deviation is D and that's because most of the data is further, furthest away from the mean. Okay. And that's the tall bars. So most of the data is further away from the mean. And that is what standard deviation is. To calculate standard deviation, we figure out where is the data with respect to, standard or to the mean. So we're taking away the mean continuously. So in a question, 
where most of the data, so most of the tall bars are beside the mean. So like in B, that'll have quite a small standard deviation, while D will have a much bigger standard deviation. So example 5.2, correlation. So the first thing we've been asked um, is to find the correlation coefficient of this data in table one correct to three decimal places. So this data is an experiment measuring the fuel consumption at various speeds for a particular model of car. And they've given us the speed in kilometers per hour and fuel consumption in kilometers per liter. Um, so when we work out the correlation, we get 0 0.2. Nine five seven. So remember, they said three decimal places. If you are unsure how to calculate the correlation coefficient, I would suggest the easiest thing to do is to go on to Google and literally search your make a model of calculator. Um, there is some information on the Project Maths website that help with Casio, but they don't cover Sharp. So if you want to look up them, they'll cover Casio. If you want, if you have a Sharp or another brand, I would suggest just putting it into Google. It's really important you know how to use your calculator with all the statistical um, menus, and that's what we're going to be focusing on as we work through the next few sections. So part B is plot the points from the table on the grid below and draw the line of best fit by eye. So it should look something like this. Uh, for the line of best fit, it's not the line that goes through the most points, but it's the line that fits the data the best. So you want to try and have it so that you have the same-ish number of points going through above and below. So what I was trying to do, and I think I slightly missed out my ruler, was so there's two above and four below, but actually if we could have moved that slightly down, we could have caught another point. You're not going to be marked very harshly on this, all they're looking is, do you get the sense of what the line of best fit is? So the slope of the line of best fit is found to be minus 0 0.15. What does that value mean in context? Well, that's telling you how these two variables relate to each other. So as the speeds increase, by one kilometer per hour, the average fuel consumption decreases by 0 0.15 kilometers per liter. And the key things they're looking for here, speed increase says by one kilometer per hour, the fuel consumption decreases and 0 0.15 kilometers per liter. So they're the key things that they're looking for that decreases is coming from the fact it's negative the 0 0.15 means kilometers per liter and um, it is for one movement on the x-axis so it gives us the movement in the y-axis for each step on the x-axis example 5.3 standard deviation so this question um, has a link to trigonometry because it is a trigonometric function but a very basic trigonometric function um, we're focusing on really the question which is going to ask us to work out with the standard deviation. So the graph below shows the voltage V in an electric circuit at, as a function of time. The voltage is given by the formula V equals 311 sine of 100 pi T. So straight away, we should be able to figure out that if we have 100 pi t, we're actually talking about radians. Now, they have not mentioned radians. You need to have figured that out. So we are talking about radians. So if you're using your calculator, you need to change your calculator into radian mode. 
Now, so write down the range of this function. So um, it's a quite a straightforward sine function. There is no movement from the midline which means the range of the function is going to be minus 311, 311. And that comes from the 311 at the start of the function. A usual range for a sine function is plus one, minus one. So when you multiply that by any number, that will create the new range. How many complete periods are there in one second? <clears throat> so a complete period is how long it takes to do a rotation. So if we follow the graph, that's one rotation. So we have one rotation and that is 0 0.02 seconds. So 1 divided by 0 0.02 is equal to 50. So therefore 50 periods per second. second. So part BI, the table below gives the voltage, correct the nearest whole number at equally spaced intervals from T1 to T12 over one complete period as shown by the dashed lines on the diagram. Use the entries given in the table and the properties of the function to complete the table. So we can just do a little bit of substitution in our calculator and we get 269. So <clears throat> what each of those lines mean, so we have, I'll just do a little bit of T here. So we have give, we've been given here a 0 0.01 and this is 0 0.02 and then this 0 0.01 has been divided into six pieces. So 0 0.01 divided by six, it's basically giving us one over 600 because um, it's not particularly nice. Um, and by two, so it's two over 600, three over 600, 4 over 600, 5 over 600, and that 0 0.01 is actually 6 over 600. However, without touching your calculator, you might start to see, well, actually, 311 is the maximum height, so it's going to come back down. So we get 269, and then the next one will be 156. And when we get down to 0 0.01, looking at the graph, that's actually a 0. Then we go negative, but there is a symmetry to these graphs. So the negative values are going to mirror what we had as the positive values. So that's going to be 269 minus 311 minus 269 minus 156, and we're back up to zero. So using the T's, absolutely fine. However, you can actually use your logic and it will make life a little bit easier. So you don't have to read it from the graph. You're just using the fact that the this particular graph, this sine function, is symmetrical. So using a calculator or otherwise, calculate the standard deviation of the 12 values. So you need to again be able to work with standard deviation on your calculator. You really won't have time to work it out using a table. We're not going to do it using a table. Um, so when you put that into your calculator, you get 219 0.89 which is 220. Again, if you're unsure how to do it for your particular calculator, best thing to do is to Google that. The standard deviation of closely spaced values of any function um, of the form V is equal to A sine BT over one full period is given as K sigma is equal to V max, where K is a constant that does not depend on A or B. And Vmax is the maximum value of the function. Use the function 311 sine of 100 pi t to find an approximate value for k. So k sigma is equal to Vmax. So we have k. Our standard deviation is 220. 
and the maximum is 311. So that means k is actually 311 divided by 220 and we're getting an approximate value correct to three decimal places, 414. So using your answer for ci or otherwise, find the value of b required so that the function v is equal to a sine bt has 60 complete periods in one second and the approximate value of a where that so that it has standard deviation of 110 volts so we have v equals a sine bt and it has 60 periods per second that means one period takes 1 over 60 and the value of b this is for me you need to know is given by 2 pi because we're dealing by radians divided by the period and that is 2 pi divided by 1 over 60 which is 120 pi and that is approximately 377 the second thing that they've asked us is to find an approximate value for a so we're going to use the formula so v max is equal to k standard deviation so the maximum v is going to be 1.414 we can use that k because they told us um back in part i that k is a constant that does not depend on a or b so it's constant it doesn't change and then that's 110 and that gives us a v max of 15 5.54 that coefficient we usually leave that in whole number so it's 156 so we actually get a function which is v is equal to 156 sine of 120 pi t now they didn't actually ask us to write the whole function out they wanted just the value for a which we got and the value for b which we also got um, I'll actually rub that out because uh, we have equals b so we could have it as 120 pi either and I prefer working the way that they have asked us to so for example that first function gave us pi in its angle so I would reply by giving pi in that angle you would have got your marks either way